Hi, welcome to the Pearls and Polish podcast. My name is Rachel and I'm coming to you from just outside Sacramento, California. This is our July 2022 update. So checking in with all the things that happened in June, talking about all the things happening in July. Um, so happy that you're here to join me. So you can find me on Ravelry and Instagram and links to that are on my website, which is in the description as well as all the makers, designers, yarn dyers uh, that I talk about in today's episode. So let's jump to it. A um, lot of things purchased, delivered, a lot of things started, a lot of things finished. So June was a busy month. Um, first off, Woolberry's Bee Butt Socks. Um, Woolberry, uh, the maker behind that is Bethany and her husband Reese. They are doing solstice boxes this year. So in their summer solstice, they had a cute little picture of a bumblebee in this little, little bumblebee butt. So that turned into a thing online and Bethany did just one colorway called Bee Butt. So I was able to get one um, and made Bee Butt socks. So I used Lindsay Fowler's um, high desert sock pattern um, and I made some changes to it so I could get more of the distinct um, yellow and black stripes to it than like the marled look so um, I used basic black from black cat fibers which I had kind of just lying around um, with my bee butt so Using those two, I really love how they turned out. I think the toe especially looks like a bee's butt with the stripes. So, cast those on, got those done quickly in June. A um, couple other things that came in, the summer sock swap that I hosted last month, um, I was paired up with someone that was absolutely lovely and she sent me such a thoughtful um, package that had of course yarn. Um, it had coffee, which is my absolute favorite. Um, there are a couple little tools in there. There was some handmade soap and um, some lavender. I don't know if they were like the, the flowers or this is a lavender satchelet. So that's um, in my sock drawer already. So my socks can smell nice. Um, and so I cast on my socks right away. So I'm doing Actually, I'm not going to tell you yet. I'll tell you that in a second. Um, let me tell you all the other things that arrived and then I'll tell you about my socks in progress. So anyways, um, got that. And then of course I got my July socks um, from Le Mercier's Year of Socks. The dyer for July is Lisa from Hickory Lane. Is it, I don't know if it's Hickory Lane Handmade or Hickory Lane Fiberworks. I'm not really sure. I always call her Lisa. Anyways, Lisa did the July colorway. It's called Luster Dust and it is absolutely gorgeous. Um, I have quite a few skeins from Lisa already so I knew that this color was going to be great. Um, but I'm so glad that she did the July colorway. So anyways, I got that. I already started that. I'll show that to you in a second. Um, and then what came in was my pre-order from Ruby and the Yarn Co. So they did a kind of like a greatest hits. So she brought back a bunch of colorways and in that was her Hogwarts in Autumn colorways. So um, I started following her right after she had put out all these colorways. So I'd missed it. Um, but as you guys know, I'm a big Harry Potter fan. Um, so when this came back out, I knew I had to get some. So the Hufflepuff colorway that I got for sweater is gorgeous. Um, I didn't realize just how many layers of color is to this yarn. So it's going to look really, really nice. So I'm excited to cast that on at some point, just hopefully some point soon. Um, then my Ravenclaw sock yarn, which is my house for my socks and my Slytherin sock yarn for my sister for her house um, came in as well. And so I'm really looking forward to casting those on. Um, I'll probably at least cast on my sister's socks so she'll have them in time for Christmas. 
Um, I've started just kind of starting socks for her and just holding on to them so that when it comes time to like Christmas, birthdays, other times that you give gifts, I have them ready and I can just give them to her then. Uh, but anyways, that came in, so I'm really excited for those and how those are gonna turn out. Before we get to works in progress, I'm gonna talk about things that I have finished because I've finished a few things. Um, first off, I finished my Christmas socks from last year's McMullen Fiber Co. Advent Box. Um, so I've talked about Advents before. This was the full skein of yarn that came with that year's box. Um, I had to use part of it in my blanket, but I really wanted to make some socks out of it. So for summer sock camp, um, one of my goals was to kind of use yarn that um, has just kind of been sitting for a bit. So either yarn that I've already wound up into cakes that need to be cast on or things that have been in my stash for a bit. So um, of course it's been a year, six months, so I needed to start those socks. So those got done first. Um, so yeah, really happy with those. Of course I did my original classic kind of pattern. Still haven't written it. I'll get to it at some point, <laughs> but i uh, really happy with how those turned out. Um, let me grab my notes. So this year for summer sock camp, I've been having this little notebook, dope rhymes. Um, I don't know where we got this, but it was lying around and it was empty. So I've been keeping all my notes in here for summer sock camp, which has been great because it's always in my bag. Um, sometimes it's easier just to like write something down than to like put it, grab my phone, pull up my Ravelry page, find the project page, write some sort of notes. Um, Cause I get lazy and think I'll get to it at some point and I never do. Um, so anyways, this is my notebook. It's got all the socks that I have cast on, all the socks I have finished. Um, I have finished five so far, so I'm gonna go off my notes. Um, so anyways, McMullen, finished. Um, my June socks, which were from ZZ Textiles, that was the June colorway for year of socks, um, finished those. I used the pattern, the shallow from Crazy Sock Lady and so happy with how it turned out. Um, that yarn is very low contrast, so the colors are kind of a little more like watercolory, muted, um, so it just really let the pattern pop, I feel. Um, so, so happy with how those ones turned out. Um, finished little front porch from Hickory Lane. Um, like I said, I have a lot of Hickory Lane. Um, I've been wanting to make like no-show socks, um, since I really like Converse or Vans or Allbirds, kind of those slip-on shoes, um, but I don't like my socks to show and I don't like wearing them without socks. Um, so I've been wanting to make some no-show socks, but I'm terrified that I'm going to get through like a sock and a half and not have enough yarn. Um, so I purposely only worked with 50 grams out of the 100 gram skein um, to make a pair of shorty socks and that way I can try making some no-show socks and see exactly how much yarn I'm gonna need. Um, so I haven't started the no-shows yet. That will probably be later in the summer. Um, but anyways, really enjoyed how those no-show socks popped up. Someone's car is really squeaky. <laughs> um, talked about the bee butt socks. Those are done as well. Um, and then um, I finished, I cast on and finished my 2021 Advent socks from the Cozy Knitter. So she does self-striping yarn and um, she does a mystery colorway every Christmas time. So like an Advent, but each day is a new stripe. So I got it last year for the first time really enjoyed it um but the socks i knit up were too big for me um so my mom got those she was very happy with them um but i had some yarn left over so i had enough for like a shorter pair they're not really shorties but they're not really long socks so they're kind of middies i guess i don't know anyways i really wanted some i didn't want to waste the bit that I had left. Um, so I made myself a pair of socks for my Christmas Advents. 
Um, I probably could have gone like another color block in the leg, um, but it's fine. Um, now, now I have a better idea of like how many like color blocks are I can get in an inch, so I can kind of better use the yarn for this year. Um, so if you're not familiar with the Cozy Knitter, uh, she does self-striping yarn, like I said, um, and pre-orders for the 2023 ad, no, this year's advent for December. Those go on sale uh, later in the month of July. So definitely gonna get one of those. Uh, and my mom and I are gonna split the skeins. So we'll have enough for each of us to have a pair of socks. Um, they'll probably be not long socks, more like mid, like I said, middies. I don't know if that's a term. If it's not, we're gonna make it a term. Um, so we'll both have enough for a pair of socks. So looking forward to that. Um, yeah, that's all the things I've finished. Let's talk about the things I have in progress. Um, first off, socks. I have a couple of little bags here, so let me grab those. All right, so these are my burnout socks. Um, if you guys remember, I think it was February, I went to San Diego to see my sister. We went to Harry Potter World. We ate way too much good food, stayed up way too late. It was the best three days. Um, anyways, I bought some yarn when I was in San Diego and it's called Burnout and I finally cast them on. Um, so I love how these are coming out. Um, so here's the first sock and I've got one of my little, let's see if you can see that, um, stitch markers I got from Hello Lavender. She had a, I don't know what she calls it, like no scraps, basically all the little like bits of clay that she has left over from other projects. She saves it and then makes little yarn progress keepers. So I was able to get a pair or like a set. So got that on that sock. I am, I was working on this before I started recording. So I've got maybe like three more rows and then I'll start the heel flap. And of course these are my original classic socks. Like I said, at some point I'll figure out writing out a pattern. Today's not that day, and that's fine. Um, the only change I did, and I don't know how well this the camera will pick it up. Um, I did a eye of partridge heel flap. Um, so the only difference between an eye of partridge and a, I guess like a regular slip stitch is um, when you're doing slipping stitches so that you have a little more, um, like a thicker back to your heel, um, in one version, you are doing it the same. So you have like straight lines and in this version, you're alternating. So you have like a checker pattern. Um, so anyways, I liked it. Um, the only difference is you have to really pay attention to make sure that you're alternating on the right, correct side. Um, so it takes a little more concentration than sometimes I'm willing to give it. But anyways, beautiful coming along. Um, one thing I do like about once you hit that like heel flap and gusset, um, the gusset takes up like 20 rows. Um, and my like leg of my sock can take anywhere from like 75 to 80 rows before I start my toe. Um, so then it's only like 50 rows left. So it's not like a ton of work once you hit that heel. Um, so like that heel is like my like my midpoint of like, you can start seeing the finish line. So um, I'll, my goal for today is to get the heel, heel turn and do like one or two rounds of um, like the decreases and start the foot. So that will go by quickly. All right, so that's pair number one in progress. Pair number two in progress. are my July socks. I'm gonna talk about these in reverse order. So, um, like I said, the maker's Hickory Lane and Lisa is a color genius. Um, 
I'm doing something like new and different and a little scary for me. Um, this is the Mermaid Avenue Socks by Summer Lee. Um, she has beautiful patterns. She does a lot of like patterns and textures. Um, and for some reason, like a textured sock like this still kind of scares me. I don't know why I can do hard things. And honestly, this is not hard. It looks hard, but it's not. Um, once you get like the first two like rounds done, then it's surprisingly simple where I don't really have to look at a pattern. Um, normally I would write the pattern in my little notebook and then just refer to this. Uh, but I printed this pattern out so that I could like in detail study it. It was not that hard. I did not need to do that. Anyways, these are coming along quickly. Um, I'm not sure how long I'm going to do the leg of the socks since this, it does take up a bit more yarn. Um, but we're, we're trekking along. So that will be done probably sooner rather than later. Obviously it has to be done by the end of July which will be very easy. There are noisy people outside. Um, and then my last one is the yarn I got for the sock swap that I was telling you about earlier. So this is by Mint Rain, and I'm not familiar with this dyer, but I really like how the yarn is. So this is the, think about it, uh, Heel Toe do -si do by Crazy Sock Lady. And the way that you do your yarn overs and like decreases, it creates this like chevron look to it. I don't know if that, this doesn't pull it up very well. But anyways, it's a beautiful pattern, super easy. Um, and it works really well for like striped yarn. Um, so this is like the back. So I've got kind of like these micro stripes to it. I've got some pulling. Um, but I like the way it pulls together. So, um, did the heel flap and gusset, or yeah, this is the heel flap. This is little like square down here. This is the turn. Um, so I'm starting on the gusset. So that wider part that goes on like the top of your foot, like right by your heel, that's what I'm working on right now. So, um, these are going by super quick as well. Um, Sometimes I feel like a pattern sock goes by faster because um, I don't like stopping in the middle of a pattern. So um, these are, it's a two row pattern. So I like to do 10 rows at a time just to kind of get like a good chunk done. Uh, with the mermaid socks, this is a 12 row pattern, but because it goes by so quickly, you don't feel like you're knitting 12 rows at a time. Um, so yeah, so that's how you can get so much progress done. Do pattern socks, because you don't like to stop in the middle of a row. So those are the three socks that I have in progress. Um, so the burnout socks should be done since I'm halfway through, or almost halfway through the second sock. Um, I'm gonna say by the end of the week, those will be done. Um, we're gonna be spending some time with family, so I'm gonna take those with me, and I'll probably take these with me. Um, maybe, yeah, I'll probably take these with me as well. Um, so I can just get them done. Um, I really enjoy the process, but I also like wanna get as many socks done as possible, um, cause I'm too competitive for my own good. And then the last thing I'm working on, which, I haven't been working on very much um, is my sweater. So um, I cast it on on time and I, this is the, I think it's pronounced wig sweater. Anyways, I'm using um, spun right round. The purple is called eggplant. This psychedelic hotness is called um, beer goggles. I don't know if there's a story behind the name. I really hope there is. But anyways, this is like the messy looking side because it's lace. Um, once lace is done and you like get it wet and you stretch it out and you like set it really well, it looks gorgeous. Um, but this is the kind of semi-chaotic side of lace. Anyways, 
I've been working on it. The pattern is not hard. You're not even close to being hard. Um, I think it's just the sitting and getting it done. Um, and this takes a little more thinking than like socks. And then socks are just so much more portable. So I have not been working on this as much as I would have liked. Um, I think also just the sense of competition, even though it's not a contest and I know that, the whole idea of like, get as many socks done in three months has been taking more brain space than that has. So I'm gonna keep working on it. Um, once the lace work is done, I think it will go a lot faster because it's just one color and you don't really have to think about it. You just knit. Um, but I'm still really enjoying it. Um, I love how it's looking. I can't wait to finish it so I can wear it. For some reason, I just have not felt super motivated. And that's okay. You don't have to. Um, but I am kind of thinking like, oh, I should have like thought about summer sock camp. But then that's three months of the summer and then I have a month of December for all the advent projects that I usually do. Um, so like, how am I gonna get through all my sweaters that I have yarn for if I'm only knitting sweaters for two thirds of the year? I don't know. Maybe I will just knit sweaters all year, except for sock, summer sock camp. And then I will only knit socks. And then I will only do advents in December. That's never gonna happen, but maybe, maybe that'll work. Anyways, it's about the process. It's about the journey, not about the destination, all that. But I have too much to yarn, not enough time. That's really the problem. Um, yeah. Anyways, that's all the knitting. Um, June was also our anniversary month. So my husband and I celebrated 10 years of being married. Um, so how do you celebrate 10 years? You go to Disneyland. Uh, we went to Disneyland on our own without the kids. Um, we also spent some time in San Diego, which is where we had our honeymoon. Um, so it was great to just kind of get away and just rest and relax and spend time together and reflect on the last 10 years um, and all the stuff that's coming up for us. Um, so yeah, it was great to just spend time together. Um, other things, we've been watching a lot of shows. Um, yeah, like a lot of shows. So uh, we started Miss Marvel, which um, if you are any like Marvel Universe fan, super fun. If you're not a Marvel Universe fan, you still should watch it. Um, because it has a lot of like the immigrant daughter's journey. Um, so yeah, so like my my family's from Mexico. I still have family there. So a lot of what the main character, Kamala Khan, um, whose family is Pakistani. Um, so her parents immigrated, she was born in the States. A lot of what she's experiencing just like socially, I felt like I experienced as well. Um, so it's just one of those like, even if this isn't a superhero story, this is still my story. So great show, lots of fun. Um, the characters are wonderful. Definitely watch it. Um, my husband and I watch Star Trek. Okay, so I'm not a star. I don't know a lot about Star Trek. I enjoy the shows. Um, I enjoy the movies when they come out, but it was not something I grew up watching. Um, it is something my husband grew up watching. So we watch it together. I just enjoy it. It entertains me. Um, so we've been watching this new Star Trek show that's been on Paramount. Um, so it was nice to kind of like watch it together and, and have that be like a quality time thing for us. Um, so really enjoy that. If you'd like to be entertained, I find it entertaining. Um, we finished the Obi-Wan series. We are Star Wars fans. Um, I'm like a, I like to be entertained fan. Um, like I said, I, I didn't grow up watching this stuff, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I feel like it kind of filled in gaps, kind of. Um, 
between like the Anakin Skywalker and then the Luke Skywalker bits, I'm easily entertained. Um, Stranger Things, season four. Watch that. We still have the part two to watch, um, but we watch all the Stranger Things. Love it. I just love Stranger Things. Um, so I love watching Stranger Things, but I have to watch it with someone. Um, I'm one of those who enjoys re-watching shows, and I can't watch that one by myself. I don't know why. It, I wanna, it's a little scary, but like, it would be more scary by myself than it would be with other people. I know. And then right now I'm watching The Umbrella Academy on Netflix. Uh, definitely not a family show. Um, pretty foul-mouthed. Um, so if, yeah, I mean, use your own discretion, but um, really enjoy it. Um, I didn't realize that the lead singer of the band My Chemical Romance, which was really big when I was in high school and college, um, was one of the creators of the comic book. So, um, yeah, really enjoying it. Uh, I just, I'm about halfway through season two and then season three just came out. So I'm very emotionally invested in this show. So when it's done, or at least season three is done, I'm going to be kind of upset, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Um, so yeah, those are all the things we're watching or have finished watching or need to watch. Um, and then books, of course. What am I listening to? Um, I finished Wild Rover No More. I can't remember if I had finished that in June or if I finished that in May. Anyways, finished Jackie's final story. Um, if I already talked about it, I'm sorry, but I'm gonna talk about it some more. Um, the author, Ellie Meyer, had passed away before the book was published. Um, so the recording cast is a very lovely uh, little dedication to him um, since they did record it after he had died. Um, so it was kind of nice knowing that the series is like done done um, and just kind of like let let Jackie just sail off into the distance with her one true love and just find more adventures. Um, but anyways, great series. Definitely recommend it. Um, I definitely recommend the audiobook version uh, since there's just a lot of the accents are done well there's a lot of songs that are referenced in um, in the books and a lot of them I wasn't familiar with so the um, the narrator sings all of these songs in different accents and she does a beautiful job um, so it's nice to be able to like hear some of the sea shanties or some of the hymns of that time period um, sung the way they're supposed to be. Um, so I, after that one, I read Uprooted by Naomi Novik, um, a big fan of Naomi Novik. Um, so this is one of kind of her standalone books. Um, not necessarily my most favorite. Uh, there are a couple others that I like better, but it's a great book. Um, I wouldn't listen to it around small children um, since it does have a couple adult themes in it. Nothing too like raunchy, but, but you know, I wouldn't listen to it in front of small children. Anyways, unless you do, you know, you do you, whatever. Uh, right now I'm listening to The Thirteenth Tale. I've listened to this book multiple times. Um, there are two narrators to this one. It's about, um, a young woman, she's probably about my age, they never tell us how old she is, um, but she has been asked to be the like biographer of this super famous author, um, and she's finally telling her story. Um, and so you have one narrator who's um, talking from the voice of Margaret, who's the biographer, and what she's experiencing. And then you have another narrator who is telling the story um, as, you know, of the past. So really well done. Um, even though I know what happens, there are always little bits that I miss um, that I catch kind of the second or third, I think this is like the fourth time I listen to it. Um, but I catch something new every time I listen to it. So 
great book. Um, it's kind of like a ghost story, so without really being ghosts. Um, so something I try to listen to kind of in the fall, Halloween-ish time. Um, I don't always get around to it, but uh, really great book. Really enjoying that one. So that's it. That's July or June rather. July. What's happening in July? Um, we have a couple little family trips, little camping trips, swim lessons, and then school starts in August. So our summer is quickly coming to an end. So to wrap up, have a great summer. Um, if your summer is just starting, if your summer is starting to wrap up, um, hope that you are having a fun and safe summer. Um, and we will see you for August.